right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, a state-of-the-art kitchen. You have all the coolest toys. Let me, I just want to tell you. At one of our state's top restaurants for fine dining. Wonderful, wonderful. You'll see what this historic building looked like before. It's all solid limestone, 150-year-old walls, door jam. And what it took to bring it back to life as Corbett's An American Place. I mean, a lot of fun here at Corbett's American Place. From demolition. A big pile of rubble here, folks. To restoration. It's fantastic. Get all the secrets behind the innovative food coming out of the kitchen. But the fun part about yes. this <laughs> is we're going to make lollipops out of avocado mousse. It's a special look inside Corbett's right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This is what makes it fun. Hello, Tim Laird with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, I'm sitting at the porch of what was Kentucky's first dairy farm. Now, it's one of the state's finest restaurants. It's Corbett's, an American place, bearing the name of its owner and head chef, Dean Corbett, long known as the Dean of Louisville Chefs. We want everybody that walks in here, Tim, to feel like they've had the best dining experience from top to bottom, from the greeting to the exit in the city of Lowell. And it truly is a special place. It's fabulous. The menu is always inventive with new interpretations of classic dishes. Everyone is unique, different, and delicious. And everything is created with the finest quality ingredients, most of which come from right here in Kentucky. We have a gentleman out here actually in Prospect off Rose Island Road that's raising all our rabbits, all our chickens. Uh, they get some of the eggs, quail eggs. We bring in red wattle hogs from the people that own Blue Dog Bakery. They raise red wattle hogs. Local lettuces, cheeses, you name it. If it's grown in Kentucky, you'll probably find it here. And what better way to enjoy fresh local flavors than this? It's a stunning dining room in a building that dates back to the early 1900s. And it didn't always look like this. In fact, Back in 2006, the home was in disrepair, in need of rescuing to say the least. That's when Chef Dino stepped in. And we were there when the challenging restoration began. What you see behind me is a house that was built in 1916 and was the original Von Allman Dairy Ranch. A lot of history in this house. The original beadboard ceiling will be kept, as will the pillars. A big pile of rubble here, folks. The, the remainder of what was once the screen porch of the Von Allman Dairy Ranch. This is actually gonna be converted into one of two private dining areas for uh, private parties. It should hold anywhere between eight and 12 people. This kitchen, certainly a wonderful kitchen by any standards. Quite a bit dated, of course, but you've got Sub-Zero and uh, some fine appliances here. This will be demolished and make room for the new kitchen. The new kitchen was envisioned to be state-of-the-art and about 10 times bigger than the old one. And uh, this is all main kitchen, everything all along here. Main kitchen, main kitchen, very large kitchen. Addition's about 2,000 square feet, so it's a big, big addition. We got a long way to go, don't we, folks? The construction and restoration would take more than a year of hard work and painstaking attention to detail, but it all paid off in the end. We have a double convection ovens, Blodgett, brand new, beautiful, everything brand new. A 45 gallon, gallon rectangular tilt skillet and a 40 gallon kettle. One beautiful thing about the tilt is it's all automated. This is kind of cool. So this is the Globe mixer, fully automated with a little safety bracket on it. This is an ice cream maker from Italy, makes three gallons in uh, an hour. Of course, we have the Roboku Industrial R4, which is just a monster little unit. This is what's called a salamander, so this is a tool which you would do, uh, which lights up and you can do things like uh, hot browns, French onion soup. Another cool tool in the Corbett's kitchen is what's called an anti-griddle. Instead of getting hot, it gets cold. Way below zero, in fact. Chef Dino is putting it to use right now as he prepares a one-of-a-kind salad 
topped with an avocado lollipop. This is actually grown mosh. This is traditionally a French lettuce, but you don't see it grown locally, or you really never have until recently when Greg Graft at uh, Gra uh, Grateful Green started growing this. Here's the mosh, of course, is lettuce, which is already uh, picked and cleaned. These come in growth pods, individual pods, where the, uh, you know, they stay alive, basically. This is a living thing. We're gonna add our, these are pickled onions, straight onions, sauteed off, butter, little sugar, and red wine vinegar, that's it. These are beets from a, a local farmer. We have Dave Gary, wonderful. These are uh, candy striped, red, pink. He's got white, purple, you know, golden beets, every oh. kind. This guy's just wonderful. This is a, just a little straight vinaigrette of a, a fresh orange juice, a little cilantro oil, uh, fresh cilantro, and a little chive chive oil in there. Not much either, just a, just a touch. And we're just, see how very, very lightly tossing it. So we also have a uh, local melon. I'm gonna let you put a, put melon dead center. This is a compressed red melon, seedless, very tasty. You gonna trust me with this? Absolutely. We're gonna take just a little bit of this. Now let's go back and find our friends, the beets and the onions, so. I'm telling you, this is it. Yeah, we're gonna take a, just a tiny bit of goat cheese for everybody here, put that on. This is the uh, goat cheese we're gonna be using. This is a Blue Ledge Farm goat cheese out of Vermont, so it has a, uh, you know, a little bit of a blue mold line going through it. All right, so there's that. This is a little bit of chive oil. You can go around there and do your little drizzle thing. But the fun part about yes. this <laughs> is we're gonna make lollipops out of avocado mousse to go on top just to have fun with using the anti-griddle. Should we do those? On. Yeah. All right, lollipop time. Instead of a hot induction burner, this gets down to 30 below. So we're able to take simple liquids, mousses, purees, whatever, and instantly transform them into lollipops and different things to be able to use as garnishes. You have all the coolest toys. Let me, I just want to tell you. We're going to do tiny little. And what kind of mixture is that? This you know? is just an avocado mousse. Okay, so avocado mousse. Avocado, a little creme fraiche. And then we're going to stick them. We've got lollipop sticks. We're actually going to put them in there and then we're going to use a spatula and flip them. But you watch it, watch how quick this goes. It's quite a new tool. It's a very fun tool. I mean, it's not for every application. It's one of these things where it is just to kind of have fun with. Look at this, look. Oh, look at that, ready to flip already. Look at these babies. Wow, it's like the chef with his new toy. The lollipops go right on top of the salad. Very cool, in more ways than one. Avocado like I've never tasted before. Yum. It is good. So the first course, the salad is done. Fini. Excellent dish. We have much more from Corbett's coming up on Secrets of Bluegrass Shops. Still ahead, wait until you see what it took to restore the 150-year-old basement here. Quite a project indeed. Plus, some other historical gems that were uncovered along the way. They don't make them like these anymore, folks. And it's back to the kitchen for the secrets to an innovative way to serve seafood. I just want to jump in. It's <laughs> Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs at Corbett's, and there's a lot more to come. Tim Laird with you again with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, we're on the east side of Louisville at one of the finest standout restaurants in all of the bluegrass. It's Corbett's, an American place built both on history and innovation. The kitchen is full of high-tech tools used to make cutting-edge cuisine, all under the direction of chef and owner Dean Corbett. In the dining room, it's a different story. The atmosphere takes you back to a time gone by. This building used to be the mansion of the Von Allman Dairy Ranch, Kentucky's first working dairy operation. It took a lot to bring it back to its original luster, and we were there with Chef Dino throughout the restoration process. There's four or five original trees, maples, elms, and uh, Sweet Bay magnolias, which are all gonna be trying, we're gonna try and retain all of these trees and keep them here if possible just because they're so beautiful they need of course they need to be trimmed up a little bit my goodness this this room a lot of historical significance we've got 12 foot ceilings in here 10 to 12 foot ceilings beautiful crown molding these walls are probably two feet thick plus uh all the the uh i mean it's amazing it really is this was the uh the fuse box here at the house which has the old porcelain screw in fuses powers off, obviously, otherwise I'd have curlier hair than I already have, but uh, they don't make them like these anymore, folks. Fun stuff. Some of the hidden treasures we're finding here in the old houses, there's plenty of exposed brick, which we're gonna use 
in the uh, design. That's great old brick. The goal was to preserve as much history as possible in the house, and as you can see today, it's alive and well. The result of the restoration is really something to see, and the food coming out of the new kitchen, it's just as amazing. All right, I'm back here in the kitchen with Dino. Dino, what's going on now? Oh, fresh halibut now, Tim. Oh, fresh halibut. Fresh halibut. Here. Not quite as expensive version of sea bass, and also completely fresh all the time. We're Chilean sea bass, as you know, you have to get a lot of times now it's frozen at sea. I've cut right. eight small portions of this uh, halibut. Uh, sea salt, pepper mix, so very lightly seasoning this. And we use a blend of uh, pumice and olive oil and an induction burner. You can actually put a towel under here or a piece of fabric and actually still saute things through the fabric and not have any heat issue with a fire amazing. or anything. Oh, wow. I mean, this is some beautiful fish. The trick with this, as you know, is when it comes up easy off the pan, it's done it's on that done. side. Yeah, it's done on that side. Done. You can do, a little, you can do a little jiggle and see if you got any movement. The jiggle test. Then, I jiggle quite a bit. I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> but we're going to leave these on there for just another second, then we're going to remove them, and we're actually going to finish the dish with the other ingredients we have. We've got a crust, a little sweet almond pine nut crust that's going to go on top of the fish, and then it's going to be baked. Here's our little nut mixture we're going to take. We're going to spread a little bit of that on each of these. There's honey in here, pine nuts. They're gonna go in a 325 degree oven for probably uh, you know five to seven minutes. All right, now this is a Vermont butter. Straight, wonderful Vermont butter. This is not the light butter, this is the this good is butter. This is the real heavy duty, real deal. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is a little fresh minced shallots, a little fresh minced garlic. That's been that's been cooked ahead, okay. And there's olives. And then there are the olives. Tomatoes. And tomatoes. Little gherkins. We're gonna use a little bit of this chive oil and the vinaigrette for the deglazing. Also for deglazing, white wine. We're also gonna add a little bit of this and reduce this with these tomatoes and these olives. Oh. But we got our wonderful Russian River Valley. Smell oh that. My oh my goodness. Oh, that is. Oh my goodness. Talk about oh. wonderful. I just want to jump in. We're gonna add in a little bit of a a lobster stock and Ooh. cream. Along with some fresh squeezed Meyer lemon juice and butter. More of our fun Mr. Go. Butter there. Vermont. Mr. Cholesterol going Dino, in. they call me. Kicking it up, there we go. Might as All well, right. we're having fun. We have other goodies going into the sauce. Main cold water lobster. Oh. Some chives for color. All right, meanwhile, look, here's a uh, roasted pepper puree. So we're gonna do, you know, for our, for our fish on the bottom. Beautiful. Here is our one. We're going to put our one in there. So here we go. Okay, plate up. We got a little bit of the uh, each of the tomatoes. We've got quite a bit of the, the lobster here. We're going to put on. And then just the tiniest little bit of the sauce. Edible rose petals. Beautiful. So just simple, simple dimple. I'll That's tell you, for lobster on top of halibut, oh my can't gosh, go wrong, man. That is can't great, go wrong. Hey. The flavors all work, and it's just amazing. The pine nuts were delicious. The halibut was fixed just right. It's so fresh and tender and delicious. Very delicious. For more information on Corbett's and American Place or any other featured restaurants on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, log on to newlocaltv.com. And for more secrets from Chef Dino, stay tuned. He just continues to amaze me. Next, Kentucky raised pork that will take your taste buds to a whole new world of flavor. I wish we could cook our pork this way. It was delicious. <laughs> You'll see how to do it at home, plus the amazing lower level at Corbett's. Then, all brick, dirt, and sand. And now, more secrets of Bluegrass Chefs behind the scenes at Corbett's next. Tim Laird with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time we're in a state-of-the-art kitchen, behind the scenes in one of the top restaurants in the state of Kentucky. We're cooking with Chef Dean Corbett, the visionary behind everything at Corbett's. From the restoration of this historical building to the food and how it's served. So there's about 50 people that make this come together every night and it is a true production. And we bounce back and forth ingredients, flavor profiles, whether citruses are correct with savory items, whether things are hot enough, sweet enough, whether they're fresh enough. Chef Dino prides himself on using fresh Kentucky Proud ingredients. 
both as a way to support local farmers and to make sure his guests are always satisfied. Every bite is a different flavor. This is terrific. He also takes a lot of pride in the work that was done to bring this old house back to life. In the beginning, the 150-year-old basement was dark and anything but suitable for fine dining. First time we came down here, the architect, the builder, the designer all said, I said, well, what do you think of the house? All three of them said, the basement's the best part of the house. The first thing everyone saw, and there was a bit of a panic, was a snake skin hanging. Our little friend here, who obviously had some issues along the way, decided to cut tail, so to speak, and run. <laughs> but if you look at these doors, there's quite a few original chains and bolts, and uh, it really is rather historical. Limestone, 150-year-old walls, door jams, the floors, all brick, dirt, and sand. I mean, we're basically dealing with with dirt, and that's it. So they're going to have to be filled in, sealed, and we're good to go. It took several months to complete, but look at it now. It feels probably like it did in the early 1900s with the addition of fine food and wine. The lower level offers its own kind of romance, from quiet dinners or special group events. I've never seen anything quite like it. And the same can be said about the food at Corbett's. This pork tenderloin, I've never seen anything like this, Chef. As I told you, the good folks over at Blue Dog Bakery are raising right. red wattle hogs. When they brought in these hogs, they're 350 pounds a piece. And what we were amazed to see is that all the pork belly and all the tenderloin and everything were bright red. And what they told us is that that is what good pork is supposed to be. Red, not white. Watch what Chef Dino does with this. He sears the pork medallions in a pan lined with oil. Lightly flouring on both sides, and then we're gonna sear them just like that. See, look, beautiful, browning, right off. Shake, see how they're moving? Perfect. See, I'm doing the sides too, because so I wanna sear. So that's another thing to do, you do all the sides? That's a secret, a lot of people don't do. They do the top and the bottom. You wanna sear all this in, because sauteing is the best way to do this. And look at that, I mean, this is looking like a mini filet, basically. It does. You know? That's the beauty of it. And we're gonna put these also in a 350 degree okay. oven. Behind you, we have that veal reduction in our big kettle here. Oh my so God, this is this the, thing uh, is unbelievable. This is the, and then the whole thing is reduced from 50 gallons down to three. Wow. What I've done is I've, I've taken that, the reduction, and we're heating that up. But what we're, as a flavor component, we're adding in a little bit of red grape mustard. Oh, Are you okay. familiar with this? No. It looks like caviar almost. So it's a red grape must mustard. And then these are the morels, oh. which have, have not been cooked, but they've been soaked. Oh. I've never seen a morel this size ever before. What do you think of these? <laughs> I've got a, uh, I've, and the reason I'm saying they've been soaked is because you want to, you definitely want to check all mushrooms, wild mushrooms, for sand, number one, and critters, number those two. Little, those little bugs in there. We're going to add in our morels. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, one for you. Here it is, Vermont butter Vermont coming back butter. into play. And we're just gonna put a few pieces of the asparagus in there, so let's do that as well, or butter. I want this thing to be so rich, so let's bring our pork back out. Now, you can, look at this. Oh, wow. All these meats should rest a little bit. Yep. Made a little, kind of a little southwestern corn salsa. Little corn relish? Yeah, corn salsa. relish. So uh, uh, caramelized onions, roasted peppers, lots of cilantro. Uh, fresh sweet corn, quite a bit of hot sauce. When we think about our plate up a little bit, we're gonna put our salsa on the bottom. The pork tops the corn, and then in comes the sauce with all its goodies. Asparagus, super nice morel, right on top. And then we did a little fried potato as well. That's, Just for you, Timothy that, Laird. That, that is pure heaven. It was so tender and delicious. The pork dish was very tender, something that I've never had before. And this flavor concept, it was really flavorful, really good. The pork was amazing. It was tender, the royal mushrooms combined with it. Mm -hmm. Excellent flavors all together. It was delicious. The pork was delicious. Thanks for coming to see me. He's one of the best. Yay. Oh, Chef go on. Dino. Thanks to Chef Dino and all the wonderful people here at Corbett's at American Place for hosting us today. And thank you for watching. That'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time.